Hey guys, Kevin Minish, my review for something that I have been waiting to review all week long. I told you guys I would start watching this Monday, but I would not review it till now. But finally, tonight, it concluded, and finally I can review that, and that is the 2016 reimagining of the classic 1977 miniseries Roots. Yes, Roots finally ended tonight after four nights, and which is great because I can finally review it. And the only reason I'm saying finally is because I've wanted to talk about this for a while, and... I'm very happy I can finally talk about it because I was really hesitant going into this. I really thought, okay, it's Roots. It's a huge property that you're dealing with here. I mean, the idea with Roots, it, it's it changed miniseries forever. I mean, the amount of ratings that it got in terms of things like that, I mean, there hasn't been a miniseries that has gotten that big of ratings in a while. I mean, even Game of Thrones nowadays does not have the kind of ratings that Roots had. It's, it's ridiculous, the kind of ratings that they had. Really, it's crazy. Um... But I really wasn't sure if the story needed to be told, that this was necessary, and if it even was going to be that great. I thought, you know, why remake an original classic? So I really was hesitant going into it, but the trailer really impressed me. The trailer really impressed me. It really seemed like they were trying to take it seriously, and they were trying to do something different with it. And that's something I really appreciate. And then it got rave reviews. Like, it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I have not seen a single negative review of it. And I am very happy that, um, you know, I was definitely really excited for it. And overall, what I think of Roots, Roots is a masterpiece. I'm not going to lie. Roots is an absolute masterpiece. I love everything about this version of Roots. There's so many things to get into here. Roots is something that I think we all know. Um, but if you guys don't know the plot for whatever reason, which I think there probably are people that have not seen Roots. I mean, I'm sure that you did if you were like in history class or something. But if you have not seen Roots, um, uh, the, basically the basic plot of it is that we focus on this um, man, Kuntik. Kite, he was an he was a slave back in the 1700s. Well, he's not a re he's not a real person, but basically he was a slave in the 1700s and everything. And he is from this Mandinka tribe. Basically, they are Muslim. They are uh, Muslim natives, not natives, but like Muslim um, Mandinkas. And basically, he is he and a bunch of people from his land. They are taken. They are taken to America, where they are then slaves and everything. And basically, it is. It goes from his perspective to them when he has a kid, and then it focuses on her, and then all the way to the Civil War when slavery is finally abolished, and basically is the journey to seeing their family fight fight for what they believe in, you know, um, get slavery abolished, and really just let their voice be heard, and that basically is a plot of Roots, which I think is fantastic. I really do love the plot, and that's one of the things that I think makes this so great, is that the plot didn't really change at all, and that's something that made Roots, you know, as good as it is, really. There's so many things to get into here, uh, but let's first talk about the idea that it's a reimagining, because I want to get to that first before I get to the cast, because that's one of the things that I think benefits this best, is that I think the idea of it being a reimagining is that, you know, because it's not a remake, and I'm tired of people saying it's a remake. It's not a remake. It's a reimagining. I think the idea behind it is that, and what LeVar Burton, you know, who was the star who played Kutahite in the original, um, I think his idea is that there are certain things that you could not get away with in 1977. You can get away with now in terms of censorship, in terms of what you can say. I mean, things aren't as big as a deal. I mean... Imagine, you know, look at what we see on even network TV nowadays. I mean, really, there's a lot more they could do in terms of technology, in terms of scope, and really was the perfect time to remake this. It's also because they have, there are facts that they have gotten um, about the, you know, about, about the slaves and things like that that they did not have in the 1970, in the 1970s, and that also was something that they wanted to add here, and I think it just all worked really well. But let's first get to the cast here, because that definitely is one of the things that makes this main series as amazing as it was. Malaki Kirby was someone that I was really worried about, but also very excited about. The fact that I never heard of him really made me interested in seeing, okay, maybe this will be his breakout role. I mean, he has done stuff in, I believe, BBC and things like that, but he's not really well-known in America. I'm like, okay, this could be his breakout role, or he could completely, you know, uh, tarnish it because he's not as well-known in the source material, but he really killed it. I mean, he had a really tough role to take on as Kunta Kinte. I mean, really, that that is a very well-known role. LeVar Burton did a great job with it, but I think Malaki Kirby just made it that much better because here 
here's the thing with Kunta, is that while he is scared as a slave, you really do see how strong he is and how he's not going to let this stop him and how he is going to fight and things like that. And I think he did that very well. He had this just amount of bravery and perseverance. I mean, he's a very inspiring character. And he, also the emotion there, you really do see how much he cares. And that's something I really love is as he's as emotional as he is tough. And I really think he portrayed this character perfectly. He did a great job. And as a character got older, you know, he's facing into more situations. I really love the way he was done. They did a little bit more with his character here that I heard from the original. Like, they may have been a bit more ruthless. They may have been a bit more rebellious. They may be more violent. And that's something I really love. He's more, um, you know, quick to stand up for himself. You know, he doesn't just let the slaves uh, call him by his slave name Toby, which, of course, yeah, in the original one, he didn't do that either. But here, he really is a big, a big part of this is his heritage. He is a big, you know, definitely... Um, that's something that he really believes in is his family, and I think he did a fantastic job. Like I said, he had a very tough role to take on, but I really think he killed it. And I'm very glad they had the same actor um, the whole time who played Kunta Kinte, because I do think if they would have gotten someone else, it really would not have worked. I think Malaki Kirby really did a great job, and you really did believe when he got older that he was older. I believe he's only in his 20s, but he did a great job. I can't wait to see what he does, and he definitely is going to get an Emmy. He better get an Emmy nomination, because he definitely does deserve this, um, and played, I think, a fantastic role as Kunta Kinte and really did kill it in this. Forrest Whitaker is probably one of the most well-known names here. Obviously, you know, this is a really star-studded cast, but also, I think he did a great job in this role as Fiddler. He really was fantastic. You really do understand what's going on with Fiddler. Fiddler's been in this, you know, compound a lot longer than Kunta has. He understands what it means to be a slave. He understands that you have to give up your entire life, and you can tell he doesn't necessarily want to, you know, basically, he's the one that ends up training Kunta. He's the one that gets Kunta to basically be a slave, the one that teaches him ways of a slave life and things like that, and I thought he did a great job. The bind between these was really interesting. Like I said, you can really tell that he doesn't necessarily believe in what he's teaching Kunta, but he's basically forced to do that, and you can see that he really does care for him, and he really can understand what Kunta's going through. I think their relationship was really great. I really did enjoy it. I think they both did a very good job, and just like Fiddler, I think Amatsi um, Cora Needle as Belle, I thought she was also really great, because she basically plays um, Kunta's love interest, Belle, and these two actually suddenly get married. They decide they just want to get married because, you know, they really love each other, and they just want to get married, basically, and I think she did a great job. She definitely gave him all this motivation. She's also a very strong character. I really love what they did with her, and both these characters worked very well. I really like the relationships they had with Kunta, and that's something I definitely really enjoyed, um, but like I said, like, that's basically the first, uh, two and a half, uh, one and a half episode. It focuses on Kunta, and then it goes to Kizzy, who Kizzy I was a bit worried about because of the fact that it just rambling goes to her perspective. I didn't know how I was going to feel about that, but I did hear they made a lot of changes to her character. She's a lot stronger here, and I really do want to point out Emery Crutchfield, I think, killed it as young Kizzy. In fact, I think she stole the entire show. In fact, she might be my favorite performance out of everyone. She was fantastic. I loved her in this. I thought she was amazing. I mean, Kizzy is a very interesting character because she's basically, she has been taught by um, G. Hanelius' character, which we'll get into a little bit later, but she has been taught by her to read, and basically, you know, Kunta, you know, she's been taught to read, she can speak English very fluently, and that's something that Kunta and, you know, Belle, they're not as well known in, because Kunta, of course, is from Mandinka, he speaks Mandinka, that is his, you know, regular language, and then he speaks English kind of like, he's, he's bilingual in that way, but he's basically been forced to be bilingual, but Kizzy, she's taught herself to read and write, and she very much stands in that, I like how she stood up for what she believed in, even against her parents, even. I mean, there are times where she does defy her father, and the fact that there's this guy Noah in her life that she really likes, I think she did a great job. I really loved her character, and she goes through some really bad shit, but Anika Noni Rose as well did a great job. She's the only character that's played by three different actresses, but I think it works really well. I think Anika Noni Rose definitely did look like an older Emery Crutchfield, and she really did kill it as Kizzy. I really loved her character overall. She's probably the one you feel the worst for because she goes through the most shit, but I really really did love what they did with their character. She was fantastic and really was one of the highlights, I think, the entire thing. And better get an Emmy nomination. I mean, there is a scene um, at the end of the second episode, and I just said Emery Crutchfield. Now, I thought this was Anika Noni Rose at the time. I didn't realize that um, Anika Noni Rose only plays the older Kizzy, but Emery Crutchfield, there's a scene at the end where she better get an Emmy for that scene because she was incredible. I love what she did, and she really was amazing in that scene. 
And then, of course, it goes from Kizzy to Chicken George, and Reggie John Page, again, was fantastic as Chicken George. Chicken George is probably one of the most fun characters in this because he's actually really outgoing. He's kind of cocky. He's a bit more, um, just... He's not really humble. He likes, he gets excited about a lot of things. He's a, very much a crowd pleaser, but he also, again, is very strong for his rights. And he really does, you know, care very much about his family and his heritage and where he came from. I think he did a great job with that. He was a great character, and he really balanced out the comedy and the drama really well. You can really tell what he's facing. But he's also facing this situation because basically he is Kizzy's um, son, but he doesn't realize that this man that he's become friends with, Tom. Um, Leo, played by Jonathan Rhys Myers, is his father, and you don't really know, you know, he doesn't really know if he can trust him or not, he's kind of trusted him, he's kind of turned against his mother a little bit, and I thought he did a really great job, I really love the direction they headed with his character, especially in episode 4, there is a scene at the end of episode 3, he just killed it, he was incredible, I love what he did, and just as strong, I think, as uh, the other people I've named, everyone really was fantastic, um, I really could go on all day with these, but um, I think Reggie John Page, again, he was fantastic, he's the last lead and really he did a fantastic job. Like I said, I could go on all day with this cast. I think everyone was really fantastic here. James Purifoy is really great. Matthew Good is really intimidating as his doctor. That is really ruthless, but again, really goes with the time. Jonathan Rhys Myers, holy shit in this movie. I mean, he is just so menacing, but you also kind of feel bad for him because of the situation that he's facing, and it's really interesting the way they did that, and every character they try to do that with, even the ones that you know are very much racist and, you know, they are very much against against, um, you know, blacks and things like that, and they do support slavery. You can understand it, and I think they did a really good job with that. G. Hanelius, holy shit, she impressed me. I mean, she was incredible here. I did not expect G. Hanelius to give the performance that she did. I mean, this is someone from Dog with a Blog on Disney Channel. Who knew she could act like that? She was incredible. I loved her character, Missy Waller. Really, everyone was fantastic. Like I said, I could go on all day. I really think the entire cast as a whole did a fantastic job, and they all were really great here. So, really, like I said, and Lawrence Fishman as well does a great job narrating. I mean, this cast, really, everyone was just great and I think everyone really did a great job. Then the directing here, that's something else I really do want to talk about, because I think the directing uh, was really great here, and I think they did a great job with keeping the tone the way they needed to. Um, it's obviously very dark and very hard to watch at times, definitely. It's not an easy watch, and I can totally understand if you guys don't want to watch it, but they did a great job in basically showing you what you need to. You know, they don't show you things that you don't need to. I thought the tone was very well balanced here. It's very hopeful, you know, it's sad, but it's also hopeful, because you know eventually Eventually, they're going to get out of this. You know, of course, would do what does happen to the slaves, but it's also very sad at points because there are times where they make you think things are going to happen, and then, of course, you know they're not going to happen, and you really care about these characters, and I think it's one of the reasons why the directing was so great here. The tone is very well done. It's, like I said, very sad at points, but it's also kind of happy, and you, when there's hope, you really are enjoying it, but then that hope kind of goes away. It seems like anytime there's hope, it kind of goes away for them. It's very sad to see, and... I really love the way the directing was done, but what I really love the most was the writing, because, like I said, this is much different than the original. There are a lot of things that they changed. Like I said, this is very much a reimagining. Like, for example, they really get more into the Mandinka culture, and that's something I really did love, is in the first episode, they take about a good 20 or 30 minutes to really just show you what the Mandinka culture was like, and I think it's really cool the way they did that. Um, it's very fascinating, honestly, if you guys want to look it up, Mandinka culture, it's, it's honestly really fascinating. Like, they were trained and everything, um, and I think, really, it's interesting the way they did that, and they made the characters a lot more ruthless and a lot less, um, you know, they they really aren't in any way helpless. These characters, they are gonna fight, so they're not just gonna take shit from people, and I think they did a great job with that. I really love the writing. I mean, again, it's hard stuff, but the story is so interesting. It's an eight-hour miniseries, it really is. I mean, four nights, eight hours, that can get really annoying. I mean, especially when you're watching something that's eight hours and you know it's gonna go away in four days. I mean, that can get really degrading. The time definitely could affect me, but it never did because I thought the writing was so interesting. I always could tell what was going on. I always was loving it and I think each episode, it just got more and more interesting. That's something I really loved and especially the transitions. This was something else I was worried about, is the way they go from, you know, Kuntz's perspective to Kizzy's perspective to uh, Chicken George's perspective. It works so well because you can totally 
understand that Kizzy isn't it is basically she's inspired what Kunta did. She's gonna try to do what Kunta couldn't do, and then Chicken George is gonna do what his mother couldn't do. I really did love seeing that. I thought that worked really well, especially when they had the flashbacks, which really sometimes comes across as very divisive. Really worked very well here because you can understand this is where their roots are, this is where their family's from, and I can totally um understand that. You know, you wanna be like your family, you wanna uh, correct the mistakes in your family. I really did love that. I thought that was very well done. But what really drew me in here, and I think one of the things that makes this so great, is the cinematography. Now, without a doubt, one of the things that stands out the most in here, like I said, is the cinematography. I mean, the amount of stuff they can show. This is, I think, the main reason why it was remade. Not just because of the facts. Well, yes, that's a major reason. But also because of the stuff they could show. There's a lot more you can do with the technology that you couldn't do back then. And they did that really well here. But it also was a lot more graphic. And like I said, it will be very uncomfortable for us to watch. But they really didn't hold back. They told it like it was. They showed you what they needed to. But they never showed too much. You know, it never felt um, tedious. It never just felt like, oh, they're showing these graphic images to just gross us out. It felt like they did this for a specific reason. They showed it to show the turmoil. They put you in that situation, and they did that really, really well. And it kind of makes you feel really bad, especially if you're me, you know, a, a white uh, male who's watching this. You kind of think, would I be on this side, or would I actually be in, if you were in that time period, would I be on this side, or would, would I be an abolitionist, or would I actually support slavery? It's a very fascinating way they kind of do that. I really did love the way they did that, especially some scenes, or there were some scenes that I definitely could not watch, but the thing is it's so grasping and so interesting, you, you just can't look away, and it's beautiful to look at, you know, even the scenes that are disgusting and not disgusting, but like, that's not what I mean, disgusting is not the word, um, just hard to watch, uh, things like that. They're still amazing cinematography. What they were able to do here is just incredible. I think it looks amazing, and it totally makes sense why they had to remake it. I mean, just looking at their backs, you feel bad for these guys. Seeing their backs, seeing what they had to go through. I mean, the first two parts are definitely the worst. I definitely will say that. The third part's not much better, but uh, the first two parts are definitely... That's where you see most of the carnage and things you don't really want to see. Um... But the whipping scene especially, I mean, the famous whipping scene, they just got that done perfectly. The way they did that, I thought, was so well done. I really did love that. But again, you, there are things here that I'm surprised they actually could show. There are things here that I'm surprised they actually did go into. I'm happy they did go into it. But again, this series is very much based on less is more. They don't show you everything. They show you what you need to see and then kind of make you imagine what it was like, which kind of makes it scarier. And I really did love that. But the cinematography here was gorgeous one of the best parts of this by far, and I loved pretty much everything when it came to cinematography. It really was fantastic. The score here as well, I thought was amazing. That score alone needs to get something, because that score that they always played, um, I thought just went so perfectly with this, no matter what time period it was. It worked because that kind of was the, the Quinte theme. That, that I felt like that's what that was. That was the Quinte theme. That was the theme that you always heard. I thought it was so well done. I love the way that theme was played. I thought it was a really beautiful score, and really added here. The editing as well, this is a very fast-paced miniseries, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's so engrossing, because it never is fast-paced to be fast-paced. It's fast-paced so it's not boring. I mean, they really did make this very engaging and very engrossing, but it takes its time as well. It's fast-paced, but like I said, it also takes its time. When it takes its time, it's really great, but when it's fast-paced, you understand why it needs to be fast-paced, and the pacing was never an issue for me. I never thought it was too slow-paced. I never thought it was too fast-paced. I was into it the entire time, and also, I was surprised. I knew it was going on the entire time. I, I was very happy about that. I mean, I thought this would be something where I was confused, but I never really was. I mean, you understand what's going on here, and also, the way they got you involved in the culture, like I said, is really interesting. Like, you totally, not just for the slaves, but you understand, like, what the slave owners went through. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that slave owners went through that I really did not know about, and that's stuff that was really fascinating to me, and I really thought was very interesting. I mean, really, this is a movie where you're gonna watch it, but you're not just gonna forget it. It does bring up a lot of conversation, and that's kind of the point here. They want you to bring up a conversation. They want you to talk about this. You know, the, just knowing this was a time in American history and that this stuff actually happened, it's, you know, 
horrible and horrifying, but, you know, it's also fascinating that it actually happened and why this happened, why people did this, you know, why were they against slavery, why were they for slavery, all of those questions are brought up here in a very good way and they're very well utilized and that's something I really did love. And I do want to talk spoilers, guys, because I just have to. I have to talk spoilers. I have to talk about the things that I really loved. I have to talk about the things that I was very shocked at, uh, some of the changes that they made. If you guys have not seen Roots, just go watch it. I know it's going to be very hard for a lot of you to watch. I will tell you, if you don't like watching things that will make you cry or make you sensitive, this is not the miniseries for you. I do think it's something that everyone needs to see at some point in their life. But if you guys need to skip, like, the whipping scene, I totally understand that. There were some scenes I just could not watch. And I'm actually going to tell you guys what those scenes were right now. I mean, there were scenes where I literally went, oh, God, because there was just... It was so hard to watch, knowing that stuff actually happened. That is what they did back then. I mean, it really... I don't do that a lot, but it really was disgusting what the slave owners did to these slaves. It really is crazy, but like I said, if you haven't seen Roots, I'm going to spoil a lot of stuff, pretty much this entire thing, and I really want to talk about the things that I really want to get into, and let's just get into it. Okay. So, a few things I do want to talk about is that there are a lot more things that this added. For example, I did not know that there were all of these regiment groups that tried to transport slaves out of slavery. That was really fascinating to me. The fact that these are whites uh, regiment groups, basically you could leave slavery, you could join the military, I thought was really cool, definitely very well handled. And the way that they, they incorporate the Civil War here, they did not do that as much in the 1977 one. But throughout this, they keep saying, you know, war is coming war is coming and the, the war plays a you know, a greater role in each episode, especially, of course, the last one, a lot of that was joining the war. I did not know that Chicken George was going to join the war. I don't know any of that stuff was going to happen, and that's something I really did enjoy. But probably for me, the most surprising stuff was everything that happened with Kizzy. I mean, I really was shocked at what was going on there, the fact that she had this child, the fact that she almost drowned the child, and then what Tom Leah did to her. I mean, the fact that he raped her all those times, and the fact that she was going to drown that child, but then she, you know, remembered Remembered what Kunta did and remembered the hope that he had and that kind of kept her alive to have that child, you know, kept, you let her, made her keep her and the child alive, I thought was very well done. Of course, we wouldn't have Chicken George if that happened, that would have been the end of the story, but that's not why we're telling the story. We're telling the story to show hope, they're telling the story to show where, you know, how this family, um, you know, how, how the uh, problem, how the pro the progress that the family had, things like that, I thought was very well handled. I really did appreciate that. Um, you know, really good stuff there. And as, also, I mean, they kill. I was surprised. They actually did kill. Kunta kills people in this movie. Kizzy killed people. I did not think any of that was going to happen. I thought that was really cool though, because, yeah, it would make sense. I mean, they want to fight. They want to get out of there. They obviously don't want to be in slavery. Not all slaves are going to be completely helpless and just listen to their every command. No, they're not going to do that. Some are going to struck out. Like, George's scene in episode 3, which is so fantastic. I love the way that's done, because all that time, George saw Tom as a father. He saw him as a father figure. But then when he realized, and of course, like I said, we kind of know what Tom is going through, and we kind of get behind him. But at the same time, we know the terrible things he did to Kizzy as well. So in many ways, he does deserve what George says to him, and in many ways, he doesn't. The fact that he thought that he was going to be freed, and he's not. I mean, there's that moment where George is saying, I'm free. And then when you realize he's not, it's so sad, and I felt so bad for George. I mean, just that hope that he's free. You feel so happy for him, but then when you realize he's not free, that really, I mean... There's nothing worse for someone who's been a slave all their life to go through for them to think they're free and then realize they're not free. It's really sad to see, and I really did feel bad for George in that scene. And that scene where he tells, you know, uh, Tom, I'm not going to go. He, like, he doesn't want to go. You know, he's saying, I I'm free. I have no, you can't do this to me. I mean, it really is a heartbreaking scene. But I love that George comes back with a whole new perspective. He wants to end it, and they did, in fact, end it. Of course, it was, uh, you know, slavery was abolished. I thought that was very well done. And and the way they showed all those casualties, I mean, it really was crazy, but it really did show how much they fought for this. And that's something I thought they showed a lot more here, is how much they fought, really, why they stood, you know, what they stood for, what what their cause was, you know, they didn't really care what outcome came out of this as long as their people were free. That's what they cared about. They wanted to be free. they do anything they could to become free. And, of course, slavery, as we know, was abolished, which I thought was very well handled. And as, the, as much as this focused on slavery, I think it focused 
focused a lot more on the characters, and that's something I definitely really did like, and I thought that also was very well handled. And then the ending, oh my god, we have to get to the ending, because I thought the ending was so well handled. Um, I also love the way they did the bird, the scenes where the child is born. I mean, just the way those are done are so well done. I mean, I could just make a montage of all those scenes, really to show how great the cinematography is in each one of those scenes. It's incredible to watch the way that was done. Again, like I said, a lot of the culture, things like that. I mean, like them jumping over the broom. Really fascinating stuff. The fact they literally jump over a broom for their wedding day, that's stuff that I did not know, and I thought that was really interesting, and I like that they added that here. And also, they really use the length very well. They told you things that they probably didn't tell you as much about in the original, and I'm happy they did here. Um... But then, of course, the ending, where Alex Haley's telling us, you know, why he wrote this book and everything, that he had to write the book, and then you see him, he goes out, he sees all of his ancestors, and you see everything they stood for, everything you've seen through everyone you've seen throughout this. It just, it's a really satisfying ending, because the really make gives you this hope. I don't really think the ending is just appealing, you know, it's just uh, for people who have ancestors that were slaves. I don't think that's the message. I think the message is that you need to stand up for what you believe in, and that no one can tell you what to do and at some point if you really do believe in something it will get solved and things won't always be this hard I think it's a very good message I think it's something a lot of people need to remember and I think it's a very well done way to end this overall I really enjoyed that and really I think it was just the perfect way to end it like I said this better get ton of Emmys I really hope it does and I absolutely love Rugrats. I thought it was amazing. Even at points where it was so hard to watch, I still was so engrossed in the story. Like, when Kunta got his foot chopped off, I cannot tell you how much I screamed. Uh, when he was whipped, I was like, oh my god. When they were, like, uh, putting the sand on, like, the blood, I, I did not know how to react to that. I mean, it's just, it's terrifying what they did. And knowing they actually did that stuff is, is really horrifying to think about. I know I keep saying that, but it really is horrifying, and there's really no other way to put it. Um, but overall, guys, I absolutely love Roots. It's an incredible miniseries. It better win a ton of Emmys. I mean, honestly, everyone that had a major role, they need to at least get nominated because they all were fantastic. They all put so much work into this. It totally paid off, and I will for sure give Roots... A 5 out of 5 or an A+. Plus. Yes, guys, I went all the way. I am not sugarcoating this at all. I think this is a fantastic miniseries. It's a hard watch, definitely, and I can understand if some of you don't want to watch it, and, you know, if you want to skip some scenes, I can totally understand that. But if you can watch it, definitely check it out. It is an incredibly inspiring series with incredibly talented actors, and really, I think, is even is as good as an adaptation as we'll ever get from this, and really shows why this needs to be remade. And also, I think the relevance of why why we're still telling the story, things like that, and really makes you, you know, uh, gives you that empowering message and everything, and really I think is as good as it ever could be. So all of you guys in my review of Roots, let me know what you guys saw this, if you have seen it, I absolutely love this, I mean, this is something that I do want to rewatch, but at the same time, I mean, you got to have a certain kind of taste to watch this, I think something like Roots is an acquired taste, you kind of have to be like, if you're not, if you're in a bad mood, obviously you're not just gonna sit down and watch Roots. Like, Roots is not something where we're like, alright, got the popcorn, let's watch Roots. No, that's not, that's not that kind of thing. Uh, if you're eating, just don't do that, especially in the first part, you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, but overall, guys, most guys saw his Roots, if you have seen, if you've seen the 1977 version, which one do you like more? Do you like this one? Did you like 1977 one? I've heard a lot of people say they like both because they're very different, and I'm glad this one was different. I'm glad it didn't just do exactly what the, um, 1977 one was, which I will admit to you guys, there were times where I was reading what was going on there to see if they were doing the same exact thing, and I was happy to see that they weren't doing that. I'm very happy about that, but overall, guys, this is my review Roots. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I am so happy I watched this, and I will see you guys in my next video, which I think will be for my review of the series premiere of Clever Man, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.